All right, another live look from Ferguson right now where protesters have been riding in the streets there. It appears that police have that situation, that location under control. But we have been watching uh, pictures coming to our newsroom all evening long ever since this announcement uh, was made at 9 p.m. Uh, East Central Time uh, there, uh, Eastern Time, I should say. And a lot of people have been reacting to the situation. Uh, we've had reports again, our Blaine Alexander saying that a little Caesars Pizza building, that was the building that was uh, completely engulfed in flames. Firefighters have arrived at that scene. Also reports tonight of tear gas, uh, smoke bombs. Uh, one woman apparently being reportedly having a, a heart attack as a result of trying to make her way through uh, the streets there. Small children were also there as well. We were told that they were uh, being advised to get those children out of that location. We we're hoping that they did indeed do so. You see uh, protesters there jumping on that squad car, breaking windows. A number of windows and uh, vehicles throughout Ferguson have had their windows uh, broken out. Let's go to toss it over now to Brenda Wood. She has some important people, some experts about this knowledge here who can just weigh in on the situation. Brenda. I do indeed. DeMarco joining me with some insight on tonight and and the grand jury's decision is Paige Paid, a criminal defense attorney and MSNBC contributor and political analyst, Goldie Taylor. Thanks so much, guys, for dropping by. Paige, I'm going to start with you. You surprised at all? You represent police officers in cases like this. What's your reaction? You surprised? I'm not at all surprised. In fact, every police officer I've ever represented that went in front of the grand jury and testified, they were not indicted. It is hard to indict a police officer for the use of force in the line of duty. But Very you expect you expected this if, uh, for a number of reasons, though. You you had some you right. had some issues, some questions about the process. No question about it. I think the prosecutor made up his mind before he ever went to the grand jury that he did not want this officer indicted. Otherwise, he would have run this grand jury very differently than he did. Yeah, the burden of proof is very low. What, very what do you what do you have to present? Not much. To get an indictment. Probable cause. One credible witness can testify that this is what I saw. That is enough. What this DA was telling us tonight was that he didn't have enough to win the case at trial, but that's not what he needed to get an indictment. Goldie, your reaction. You're from Ferguson, and I, I want to ask you first your reaction to the decision and then what you see happening in your city. I think the decision for me was predictable as far back as August 9th. He's right. That is very difficult to indict a police officer. But our standard uh, for police officers is absolutely high. Uh, we think that we put a, a full burden of the community on them as they use firearms and use of force uh, when they're in, the, in their line of duty. But at the end of the day, with that heightened uh, sense of responsibility and burden also comes a higher standard when they're acting on our behalf. I believe that this case deserved a testing of that evidence. And that testing did not deserve to happen inside the grand jury room. It deserved to happen in an open court where you had witnesses, you know, being questioned from both sides, prosecution and defense. When you have that rigorous testing of evidence, you get truth and transparency. And I think that's what the people of Ferguson were looking for. What do you think about what's happening in your city now? We see uh, all of the live pictures coming in and your cars, police cars on fire, a huge building on fire now. Uh, did you expect this kind of response? How does it make you feel? I think I prayed against it. You know, no one wants to see their hometown burning like this. But at the end of the day, you know, Dr. King said, riots are the voice of the voiceless that when people have no other way that they believe that they can communicate, either through a ballot box or through economic or political means, then they take to the streets. St. Louis has been one of the most segregated cities in our country for a very long time. There's a reason for that. So, so what about the timing of the announcement tonight? So to, to wait until, because the de decision came earlier this afternoon, to wait right. until nightfall for the announcement, Paige? I, I can't believe that was intentional because this is what we got as a result of that. It makes absolutely no legal sense, no political sense, uh, no sense of any kind that I can imagine. All right, what about a federal grand jury? Since we don't have an indictment here, what's the process there and what's the likelihood that will happen? Well, the grand jury investigation from the federal side is ongoing even though they haven't impaneled a grand jury yet. They're continuing to gather evidence. The standard is a little bit tougher in federal court, but federal prosecutors tend to be more aggressive. They they will indict the close case. And cases. what would the charge be? Violation of civil rights, a deprivation of civil rights charge. And is that, that sounds like it's harder to get than uh, an indictment on murder. There are additional elements. You have to show that the officer intended to violate Michael Brown's civil rights, but you can do that without showing racial prejudice. Very quickly, I got to ask Goldie, uh, you know, I'm thinking about Rodney King. Have we as a nation moved the needle at all? When you think about Rodney King and you think about tonight and we see the city of Ferguson going up in flames. Has no. this country moved the needle at all? You know, we as a society have advanced on...